So good morning to everyone and uh, welcome to the uh, En-ROADS, an online climate action simulation uh, workshop and exercise. So uh, we're very glad to have you here today. Uh, the event is going to take place over the course of two days. You're going to see the agenda in a while. And uh, we have a, a great panel uh, introducing the exercise today. My name is Stefan Armenia. I am the president of the System Dynamics Italian chapter, and I am moderating this first introductory panel um, that will see the participation of several important uh, speakers dealing with uh, sustainability and climate action, uh, including the Minister for uh, Infrastructures and Sustainable Mobility here in Italy. So I'm going to share uh, my screen just for uh, uh, driving you into what we're talking about today. So let me first start with a couple of quotes. Um, Saving our planet, lifting people out of poverty, advancing economic growth, these are one and the same fight. We must connect the dots between climate change, water scarcity, energy shortages, global health, food security, and women's empowerment. Solutions to one problem must be solutions for all. That was Ban Ki-moon. The second quote I want to report to you today is, the climate crisis is both the easiest and the hardest issue we have ever faced. The easiest because we know what we must do. We must stop the emissions of greenhouse gases. The hardest because our current economics are still totally dependent on burning fossil fuels and thereby destroying ecosystems in order to create everlasting economic growth. And that was Greta Thunberg. So uh, this event falls in the scope of two main um, uh, manifestations. So that one is the All for Climate that is being uh, organized by the Ministry for Ecological Transition here in Italy. And the other one is the Festival of Sustainable Development that is taking place locally here in Italy every year and is organized by ASVIS, which is the Italian Alliance for Sustainable Development. So you can find the, the event listed among the events of both manifestations currently online on the related websites. So what are we going to do today? First of all, uh, as I said in the first hour, we will have our speakers tell us um, a few things about climate change. We're gonna see uh, this in a second. Uh, and then it will be your turn, the turn of participants, those who have registered, to negotiate the best deal for the planet. And now. So we will do it through um, and basically an online simulator, which is called En-ROADS, which is an online climate action simulation, uh, a highly interactive role-playing game that simulates the dynamics of climate negotiations, just as if you were in a real COP session. So the results of the negotiation will be uh, input into the En-ROADS simulator, which has been developed by Climate Interactive. And the simulator will thus project the temperature rise over the next 100 years. So we will see how our choices and our policies and our decisions will impact over this temperature rise. So the expected outcome of this event is to raise awareness in all the attendees, so young, younger and older ones, about the structure that drives the dynamics of climate change as well, and you will experiment that in first person, the difficulties that might arise from negotiations during a United Nations climate summit like the upcoming COP26. So this is the simulator. You will see it in a while. You will have the chance to um, maneuver the various leverages. This has been developed, as I said, by Climate Interactive uh, with the help of the Sloan School of uh, MIT. Uh, and also with Ventana systems. Um, basically, you will have the possibility to move some of the leverages in order to determine what is the impact of the temperature increase, you know, over the course of these years from 2000 to 2100. The System Dynamics Italian chapter, which I am representing here today, is an official chapter of the System Dynamics Society, which is an international society aimed at 
uh, basically promoting and disseminating the uptake and wide use of system thinking and system dynamics, which are uh, modeling and simulation methodologies. Uh, system thinking and system dynamics are applied in various fields, but in this case, you will see it is especially fit at supporting sustainability and climate uh, understanding, and then possibly also the derived policies aimed at mitigation. So, well, these are some of our uh, social media uh, if you want to follow us. Then what are the other workshop partners? We had the patronizing from the Italian Ministry for Sustainable Infrastructures and Mobility. So Professor and Minister uh, Enrico Giovannini is going to be with us today. And of course, I thank him in advance uh, as uh, he's always very uh, available to support this kind of uh, events. Then we have uh, Indire. Uh, which is the Italian Institute uh, for uh, Documenting and Innovating Research in Education. They have provided us with technical support and communication. And then we have other workshop partners, which are the uh, already mentioned uh, Italian Alliance for Sustainable Development, the European Climate Pact Italy, the Network for uh, Universities Dealing with Sustainability, which is the RUS or RUS, then of course, Climate Interactive, who has developed uh, the climate, uh, the, sorry, the Climate Action Simulation Environment, and of course, the System Dynamics Society. So as I said, what is the structure of this two days event? Well, the, we, will, we are having this introductory conversation panel with the institutions. At three o'clock, we will start with the Climate Action Simulation itself, only for registered participants. And then we'll have a debrief and bottom line for the lessons learned out of the Climate Action Simulation. Tomorrow, um, the persons, the people who have participated into the climate action simulation will have the chance to uh, produce some takeaways and video pitches from the En-ROADS experience. And then we will have some concluding remarks. So let's get to our panelists today. We are having uh, first to speak, uh, Dr. Vito Borrelli, who is the Vice Director of the European Commission's representation in Italy. We have Professor Enrico Giovannini, the Minister for Sustainable Infrastructures and Mobility. Professor Patrizia Lombardi from the Politecnico di Torino. Uh, she is the President of the Italian University Network for Sustainable Development, the RAS. Professor Ugo Bardi, Climate Expert from the University of Florence. Dr. Erika Coppola, ICTP researcher and member of the IPCC working group. Then Giovanni Moraglia, who is the coordinator of ASVIS working group team. And uh, Dr. Maria Chiara Pettenati, who is a research executive at Indire and also EU CLIPA ambassador. I will be moderating, just basically giving the word <laughs> and remembering that you're going to have five minutes, more or less, of course, um, in order to talk about what? These are the topics that we uh, are proposing, but of course, our panelists will be uh, free to, let's say, go around these topics. Uh, so we, we want to talk about what can be the suggestions to support globally and locally the needed climate actions, and then provide some hints and expectations on what can come out of the upcoming International Climate Summit and then a message for tomorrow. Well, no, wait, we must act now. So uh, I would provide the word to uh, Dr. Vito Borrelli, who is the, again, Vice Director of the European Commission's representation in Italy. So Dr. Borrelli, I think you are already connected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. It is a real pleasure for me to be here today with uh, Minister Giovannini and all the other outstanding guests. I would like also to thank SIDIC uh, uh, for inviting me to open this session for uh, an initiative that I really find extremely interesting. The idea of a, a workshop that is meant to involve young uh, activists uh, in the environmental area in a role play that simulates uh, a negotiation on climate 
seems to me extremely stimulating for different reasons. On the one hand, uh, in fact, it allows uh, these young participants to understand the dynamics, uh, the modalities, the difficulties, the challenges that often remain in the background of summits, or they are totally ignored. Summits that we often complain about so for their lack of ambition, for the poor purposes, and for their ephemeral results and conclusions. So it's easy to complain and to judge when we don't know exactly how things happen. On the other hand, I think that this simulation uh, puts participants uh, in front of the need uh, of being concrete. There is a strong need of concreteness in the elaboration of plans uh, of specific actions to fight climate change. And this exercise obliges them somehow to attentively weigh reasons and interests of all parts involved. In her speech on the State of the Union only one week ago, President uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the European Commission, has recalled how the catastrophic events of last summer, starting from the floods in Belgium and Germany, which caused many victims to the fires in the Greek islands, all these events uh, have shown once again the necessity, the need of an immediate action to counter climate change. We were reminded of this urgency even more recently by the Italian president of the council, Draghi. He was in Greece last week and he made a video conference uh, uh, on a an event organized by the United Nations. He's in New York at the United Nations General Assembly still today. And Draghi recalls that there is no time left to adopt the objectives established by the agreements in Paris. And that will be reconfirmed and even reinforced on the occasion of the COP26 of Glasgow. Glasgow, according or again, quoting President von der Leyen in her State of the Union speech, Glasgow will be the moment of truth for the world community. The main economic powers from the United States to Japan have established very ambitious objectives to achieve climatic neutrality by 2050. These objectives now have to be supported by concrete projects because with the current commitments by 2030, it will be very difficult to achieve the objective of limiting the uh, global heating by more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. Europe from its side is ready to do more. Von der Leyen has announced again in her speech that she will propose a supplementary, complementary financing of 4 billion euro until 2027 for the climate. But of course, Europe expects also other international partners, uh, United States in the first place, to intensify their efforts as well. Moreover, and this is also very important, the green transition should also be fair, should be just. The European Commission launched a just transition mechanism already in the beginning of its mandate. And uh, now, Again, von der Leyen in her speech uh, recalled that the, Commission, the European Commission is ready to launch a social fund for the climate to face energetic poverty that already affects almost 35 million Europeans. And uh, in Italy and also in other European countries, we hear it every day on the TV news that the growing price of energy is affecting the life of citizens on an everyday basis. So there are so many elements that are, in, that are uh, involved in this reflection that you are expected to carry out in the course of this uh, working day. I will conclude here just uh, uh, wishing you a very useful and uh, enriching activities and uh, with the also hope that at least some of your messages will be able to reach Milan, where the next week the, the pre-COP26 and the Youth for Climate Summit will take place. And 
hopefully also Glasgow for uh, ministers also to receive your uh, indications. And I also would like to end with a suggestion for the organizers of this very, very interesting initiative. Why not to broaden as much as possible the public of this event, perhaps envisaging a TV show where young people might show to people, to citizens who watch TV, what it means in fact to, to, to what it means to, to negotiate on the climate for the future and for the benefit of all citizens in the world. Just a very uh, humble suggestion to use as much as possible all communication means, starting from social media, of course, but also thinking of TV perhaps for people who are not young and perhaps are also very much interested in these topics. So thank you very much again for the invitation and have a good work. Thank you very much, Dr. Borrelli. I think your suggestion is uh, uh, well taken and well noted. Um, it's a great suggestion, by the way. So we will try to work on this perspective and see um, if some uh, broadcaster will take up this, uh, this possibility because it would be really a great possibility and opportunity. So thank you again. Now I would like to uh, provide the word, to give the word to um, Minister Professor Enrico Giovannini, who is here with us. So uh, Enrico, if you're here, I guess you're here. Yes, I am. Thank you, thank you, your, your, your word, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me and thank you for organizing this event. Uh, moving towards uh, COP26 uh, is mobilizing uh, a huge amount of efforts, uh, resources, people, in order to contribute to this very topical event and the road uh, towards uh, uh, decarbonization and uh, the change of our socioeconomic system. Of course, uh, young generations played and uh, are playing and can play a huge role in uh, mobilizing uh, the public opinion as the movement led by Greta Thunberg, uh, Fridays for Future, did over the last few years, but especially to contribute ideas, innovative ideas that could change the course of our actions. In this perspective, uh, uh, this kind of event is great as uh, everybody who can have uh, developed ideas and solutions may contribute to that. Solutions is uh, really a keyword of our effort at macro level, but also at micro level. And the good news is that there is a multiplicity and an increasing number of solutions that have been identified not only thanks to the investments made by governments, or regions or cities, but also as a, a result of a bottom-up approach that can uh, uh, concern individual countries, individual uh, companies, individual communities, but they need uh, to be put in a broader context in order to be tested to see whether they can be scaled up as necessary. Innovation is the other key word, not only uh, technological innovation, but also social innovation, which is a, a word or a phrase term that uh, is well known, but not to everybody. I still remember when I was chief statistician of the OECD uh, and I stopped that role in 2009 when I had to fight against uh, the directorate in charge of innovation just to include uh, in the handbook of measuring innovation even the words social innovation. Since then, a lot of things have changed. And fortunately, we can uh, see a lot of uh, social innovation initiatives as uh, at the uh, basic level in terms of uh, uh, regional or uh, community level, which on the other hand, not only mobilize individual people or communities, 
but can be a sort of model for others. COP26 will be an opportunity not only to test the willingness of the big players, member states in, of the European Union, the Union as a whole, but the other big players, China, United States, India, and so on and so forth. But I'm sure that we will see a lot of commitments by the private sector and by social, uh, sorry, uh, civil society organizations. <coughs> what we need to do is to have a clear uh, design of where we want to go. And from this point of view, I think uh, that the Italian National Plan for Recovery and Resilience is a great uh, uh, description of where Italy wants to invest in order to change our socioeconomic system. As far as uh, our ministry is concerned, the Ministry for Infra Sustainable Infrastructures and Mobility, this is a new name that I wanted to, to put to our ministry, we will manage 62 billion euros over the next uh, five years and even more than five years because even also the uh, national funds will be spent and uh, used to support to strengthen the actions that are foreseen in the national plan this is a very important message that i'm trying to convey also to regional authorities, which have their autonomy in spending money. But today, for example, we have started just these bilateral interactions with them in order to have a more coordinated approach in spending different resources devoted to infrastructures and mobility systems. The same applies to cities where a lot of innovation takes place. And I'm sure that the investments made by municipalities, by regional authorities, but also by the government to develop uh, and to show the uh, feasibility of the so-called mobility as a service, which requires uh, also the exchange of microdata among the different uh, agents is a reality, not just a dream. So there is, uh, and I'm going to the conclusion, there is a huge opportunity, but the time is very short. The time for planning, the time for spending, the time for changing our habitudes is short because uh, the latest uh, IPCC report shows that uh, the window of opportunity we have uh, to avoid uh, an incredible increase uh, in the temperature on our world is very, very limited. Let me just conclude uh, wishing you all the best for this event, but also for the capacity of uh, uh, producing a spillover effect on other events that uh, will be organized soon uh, towards the pre-COP uh, uh, event, the Youth for Climate event, and so on towards Glasgow. But Glasgow is not uh, the final point of this process. Actually, everybody hopes that there will be a new starting point. Therefore, I hope that this kind of efforts and initiatives can last uh, for uh, sufficient time really to influence decisions at the macro, meso, and micro levels. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. I think uh, it was uh, pretty enlightening and um... Yeah, definitely uh, Glasgow has to be a starting point rather than uh, um, an end point. And uh, also um, mobility and infrastructures are uh, playing a key role in helping us, I mean, not only our nations, but also our nations in going towards the uh, objectives. So thank you very much. Um, now I would uh, give the word to Professor Patrizia Lombardi from the Politecnico di Torino. Uh, she's the president of the Italian University Network for Sustainable Development. And so Patrizia, the floor is yours. Thank Please. you, Stefano. Thank you. Good, uh, good afternoon to, to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very uh, 
pleased and, and proud to be, uh, to be here to give the voice also to uh, what universities uh, uh, provide and uh, are able to support this transition. Um, I am, uh, as mentioned, uh, uh, president of a network, the network of universities for sustainable development, uh, which uh, uh, is composed by about 80 universities in Italy um, that dealing uh, uh, with uh, the uh, issues of uh, supporting communities uh, um, and communities of practice uh, um, uh, all around uh, the, um, all the uh, Italian national uh, uh, different articulated uh, uh, territorial assets that, that we have. Um, and our ambitions is uh, to support uh, uh, communities, uh, uh, not only in relation to uh, innovation and research, uh, uh, but also in uh, education, because education is really the key leverage for um, achieving the uh, target that we uh, have uh, highlighted in this uh, um, challenge uh, of the, of the crisis, of the climate crisis. Um, and uh, um, together with uh, education, also be a um, living lab model for all communities, supporting uh, all stakeholders. And the exercise that you are uh, required to develop uh, during these two days is uh, quite uh, um, an interesting exercise because uh, uh, you have the role really to decide and to decide with the voice of a different nation. And what you can do is really to negotiate because uh, you see climate change is a weak problem, is a problem that has different solution, has different stakeholder involved. It can provide um, different uh, um, ethical aspect associated that, that we have to deal with. Uh, and uh, in addition, it required agreement. And this is why this exercise is quite interesting. And we are very uh, interested to the result of that uh, in order to um, support uh, the result uh, in connection with what we already have achieved. Uh, during last May, uh, our network, in association with the um, UK COP26 University Network, have developed a, a pre-COP conference um, with uh, um, the um, uh, with the association of about um, uh, 159 different uh, nation and uh, and uh, different uh, 70, uh, 760 different speakers and about uh, 5200 attendees and the result of that is that we need to speed and to be able to reduce of at least 7% our emissions. This is what is required to do. And we cannot just delay or say we will do tomorrow. We have to do it now and every year with assessment and measurement as, um, aspect associated to this. So my worry and my advice is to be able to uh, provide as well a measurement system that help to um, also to show uh, uh, and to um, make everyone aware of the implementation and the process. And in order to be all together, um, linked in and committed in this great um, uh, challenge, uh, we need that everyone is in the same loop, is able to read the same number, and so as well, education and permanent uh, formative education is part of the game. And the game that you are going to play, ladies and gentlemen, is really the right one in order to see all the connection that this weak problem is in front of you. Good luck. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, very clear and uh, to the point as always. I say I would say that um, uh, understanding what's at stake and having a common understanding helps raise awareness, of course. And I guess that the work that the universities can do, not only in helping uh, people 
uh, measure in order to have a common understanding, it's fundamental, but also the work that the universities and the research field will be able to do in order to improve even more the technologies that we already have in order to, let's say, in the enforce a sort of uh, um, reinforcing, you know, uh, uh, dynamic uh, on, on, uh, on delivering new technologies that will drive us towards um, a better planet. So um, on this topic, uh, we also have Professor Ugo Bardi, who is uh, um, working at the University of Florence and is also a member of the System Dynamics Italian chapter. So Ugo, I would give the floor to you. Um, so maybe you can tell us something more about these problems. Thank you, Stefano. It's a pleasure to be here. I think I will take a few minutes uh, just to note a few things. And I could start by telling you that this year, 2021, is the 50th anniversary of what I think was the first integrated system dynamics model that attempted to model the whole system, the ecosystem, and the human economic system, which was made by Professor Jay Forrester of MIT in 1971. It was a major advance in uh, modeling, in physics, in system, modeling, everything. It's very, very advanced for its time. And as you know, it was the origin of the subsequent model, which was published in 1972, the limits to growth, which um, we, we are, as, as member of the Club of Rome, the Club of Rome is uh, celebrating this 50th anniversary. Next year, we will be publish, publishing a book which um, summarizes what's happened in these 50 years, which is a extremely, an extremely interesting story. Now, 50 years, and where do we stand? Well, 50 years ago, we already knew where we were going. And uh, there was the idea that we should not have taken a certain road, but we took it and <laughs> nevertheless. And that's where we stand in a rather difficult situation. As a comment, a personal opinion on this situation, I think that we need to improve. We need to do much more than what we have been doing. Forrester and um, the Meadows and the others of the Limits to Grow, they, they were a major step forward in what we call today integrated assessment models, IAM. But even the modern integrated assessment models still lack on a fundamental factor which is the agents of change, which is the human mind. And this we don't have in these models, if you notice that. And this is a major challenge. And I would conclude by saying something which is heretic in the world of the physicists and the engineers and hard scientists like I am, Stefano is, um, that on this point, economists are better than us. Mm, there is a difficult relation between physicists and economists. We all know about that. But one point is that the economists put the human being, being the agent first, which is a fundamental point, point, I think, because in our models, we don't have economic agents, not normally, mm, sometimes yes, but not normally. So we need to integrate economics and physics and these models, which has been done. I think I, I would conclude by suggesting to you to take a look at the world, work of Eleanor Ostrom, Nobel Prize for Economics. Unfortunately, she's not anymore with us, but she is the only economist who went to check the basic assumptions of system dynamics, which is the model developed by Garrett Harding in 1968, the tragedy of the commons. And uh, this is where we, we, are, we have to work because what we're seeing is the tragedy of the commons at the planetary level. And here it is, it is here that we have to work. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ugo. Um, I think uh, you raised uh, great points. So human agency is fundamental. System dynamics under this perspective has been trying uh, to integrate, um, you know, the, the social variable, let me, let me call it like that, 
uh, in most of uh, their models. And um, uh, this is part of also what we're going to experiment this afternoon. So what the participants will be able to experiment. So on top of a very complex uh, model, uh, there will be another complex model, which is the one of negotiation among humans, among, uh, you know, sometimes also counteracting uh, interests. And uh, this will be uh, a very interesting exercise that they will undergo. So thanks a lot. Um, after uh, Professor Ugo Bardi, I would give the word now to Dr. Erika Coppola, who is a researcher from the ICTP in Trieste, and she is also a member of the IPCC uh, working group, and probably uh, she is the most uh, apt to uh, tell us uh, what the IPCC found recently in their latest report, and uh, uh, what is the next way forward. Thank you, Erika. Your the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for inviting me today. And um, as you just heard, today I'm dressing a double hat. So I'm not speaking only as a scientist, but I also represent the IPCC in this uh, uh, meeting. Um, having seen the topic that was suggested to you today for discussing, I think it would be good from my side to uh, tell you about, uh, to summarize the message from IPCC in five key messages for you today. And these are the messages that the science is telling us, and they are ne not negotiable. This is what it's evident from the, from the scientific uh, research. The first point is that climate change is affecting our planet, and we know that this is us. So it's us that is producing this, and as a first time, this was stated as a fact. So there is no doubt that this is happening and this is us. The other very important point when you go to a negotiation is that there is no region that is immune to the climate change and all regions are ready and will be affected in multiple way as the global warming increase. So they will not suffer only for one hazard, but there will be multiple things happening in the same time. So this means that this is a problem for everybody and we are all on the same ground. There is not escape. What it's needed, as you know whole well, is a rapid action for a reduction of the greenhouse gas emission on a large scale and to be able to limit the global warming to the 1.5 as the Paris Agreement recommended. Therefore, this is the responsibility of everybody to work to, for a solution because the action has to be rapid and widespread. It cannot be only a portion of the planet working for that. There are also some good news, otherwise it would be too depressing. And the good news is that we are still in time. This is this still possible if we manage to reach the net zero emission by the mid century. But even if we manage to do so, we have to know, and this is maybe not as transparent as it is for us, we are already compromising because uh, even if we manage to uh, get to this target by the end of century, there will be period nevertheless for which the global warming will be above the 1.5 thresholds. And what does it mean? This means that in those period, and we don't know precisely how long they will be, there will be some change happening that are not reversible. So we are losing already something and we cannot go back, but we can still stop it. So I think the greatest message for you today is that we are still in time, we can stop something but you have to keep in mind that has to be an action fast because we are already compromising and compromising for climate means that we are losing something that we will never recover in the future so i hope that these five uh, points that for me are key point for discussion for the young generation as you but also key point for discussion for the negotiation will help you to understand how to make this planet working better. Uh, I wish that you can reach today the 
emission that will limit the global warming below the 2 degree, hopefully the 1.5, because there is a big difference between 1.5 and 2 degree. Uh, and I also wish that your example can be followed in Glasgow when the time will come. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Erika Coppola. I think um, it's always good, you know, to stick in our minds uh, some facts and statements that need to be, uh, let's say, reminded um, always, especially in these hard times. Um, now I'm going to give the word to um, a representative of the young people that, um, uh, well, the young generations, uh, and not only of the young people that will attend today our exercise, but also of the generations that are going to leave this planet uh, from today onwards. And uh, this is uh, Giovanni Moraglia, who is the coordinator of uh, the working group uh, uh, related to team uh, of ASVIS, so the Italian Alliance for Sustainable Development. So Giovanni, your turn, please. Thank you, Stefano. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the invitation for the, this important meeting about the climate action simulation. I'm Giovanni Moraglia, and I'm an ASVIS Young Team Coordinator. ASVIS is the, the Italian Alliance for Sustainability Development. The climate change of our planet, it is a problem that everyone should take care of it, and we can, cannot ignore. Especially as young generation, we cannot ignore it. We must be part of this change. We are responsible. We are citizens of the world. And we must help and support the future decision that the United Nations will make in the near future in the climate summit. We can be the change and being the protagonist of this change for everyone and for the future generation. I'm sure that after this two days of working section, something very good and very beautiful will come over. Thank you, you very much. Bye, Giovanni. Thanks, Giovanni. Uh, it's useful to have, of course, uh, um, a word of encouragement from the young generations, and uh, and I think that uh, this will play a key role. All the same, there are also younger generations coming up that, of course, need to uh, be trained and educated according to um, a new way in, in living our world today. And so we believe that this is a key role which has to be played by education. And by the way, um, the exercise we're gonna uh, do today is somehow also an education exercise because people will learn and will get aware of the difficulties. And basically when you get educated, that's what basically trainers help us to do. So I would give the word to uh, engineer Maria Chiara Pettenati, who is from uh, Indire, a research executive from Indire, and also uh, is an ambassador from the European Climate Pact. So Maria, Maria Chiara, your turn. Thanks. Thank you, Stefano. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really happy uh, to welcome you in this virtual space, which is hosted by my institute, Indire. Indire is the Italian National Institute for Documentation, Innovation and Education and Research. As uh, Stefano said, uh, this event uh, has uh, uh, some extraordinary characteristics for two main reasons. One is related to the content we are discussing today, and the one other one is related to the method we will use. I think this uh, Enroad Climate Action Simulation will help us to think about responses to climate change challenges, uh, allowing us also to consider and incorporate the needs and perspectives of those who are affected by the impact of global warming around the world and who has, are also more vulnerable and more discriminated, rather than simply focusing on economic costs that are more easily uh, quantified. But I think that the very meaning of this experience, which is dedicated mainly, but not exclusively, 
to a young audience is to take citizenship and youth initiatives as a starting point from which we will develop hope inspiring uh, scenarios that will engage more people to take action and i will would like to conclude my welcome um, address uh, using the words of a young american poet uh, omekongo di binga uh, in his poem, Be Astronomical, uh, it, it is the official poem he wrote for the TED Youth for American National Space Agency. And Ome Congo says, Today I call on you to be astronomical, to so higher than any space shuttle in pursuit of the ideological. Stretch your mind beyond reason, be monumental and colossal. To make an impact in this world, you must be no less than phenomenal. You must right the wrongs of previous generations with innovation that invest all mankind and not just those of your nation. So I thank you and I wish you to enjoy this experience today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Maria Chiara. And I think that uh, this poem that you have told us about is uh, really inspiring. So we need to be brave. Um, we need to stretch ourselves beyond uh, a behavior that we have never taken in the past. And it's difficult. Of course, it's difficult. And sometimes this means also putting apart our own interests um, for the sake of a common uh, and higher goal. Um, which is the only planet we have, so there's no planet B. Well, at least there won't be for, I don't know how many years or maybe even centuries, of course. Um, so I would conclude here this uh, session uh, just by reminding people um, what is going to be the next uh, part of this event today. And eventually, I don't know if we also have some questions uh, that uh, were uh, taken in the question and answers. So uh, first of all, I'm going to share again the presentation. Um, so you see here, this is the structure of these two days events. So today, after this introductory conversation, we're going to have the real En-ROADS climate action simulation, which is going to last more or less for two hours and a half, uh, more or less. Um, and this is dedicated only to registered participants. So this session will not be broadcasted publicly, uh, but will just be eventually recorded for later use. But uh, we will, of course, let you know about it. Uh, and at 5.30, there will be a debrief of the exercise that participants will have done and also a bottom line. Uh, following this exercise, uh, participants will be called um, upon, um, let's say, presenting tomorrow afternoon their takeaways and eventually if they like also to produce some video pitches from their Enbrose experience uh, that we will be able to well i'm not sure if we will be able and how but we will try to provide um to the ministries that will be attending the pre-cop and also uh, possibly to the cop 26 in glasgow so we will put this material uh, and we'll make it available uh, for ministries um, during those two very important uh, uh, events. And also, of course, for the people, for the young people attending the Youth for Climate Summit in Milan at the end of the month. Um, so um, I'm not sure if there are any uh, questions that were taken in the questions and answer. So it means that uh, probably uh, it was all clear. Now, I would um, invite uh, all attendees that are uh, attending now this, uh, uh, this uh, event uh, on, online in the streaming uh, to uh, connect directly to the room where we're going to hold the climate action uh, exercise simulation. So in a few seconds, you will see uh, a link appearing and uh, you will be taken to the main room that will be the plenary room where we will start the uh, climate action simulation with Enroads. 
So let me thank again all the panelists. Uh, and uh, I think that um, the points you raised and the comments you made were all relevant. Uh, as I said, uh, the challenge is particularly challenging. So we are in front of uh, an important moment and we need to find a way. And I hope that the climate action simulation exercise will help us understand what is needed uh, and what we will help us uh, out of this you know, bad situation we're currently in. Thank you very much to everyone and uh, stay tuned and don't forget to click on the link to go to the uh, room where we'll have the exercise. Thanks a lot.